Yes, what's going on? It's Nancy Baker and today I'm at Chadwell Heath, the home of West Ham United Women and I'm going to be joined by a very special guest, Miss West Ham herself, Kate Longhurst. Kate, good to see you. How are you doing? And you? Uh, yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good, yeah, not too bad. So I've got a few questions for you. First up, tell me about where you grew up. Oh, I grew up in the town of Whitham, yeah. um, where mum and dad still live. Yeah, yeah just a, a small town. A lot of people kind of looking out for each other and yeah, just a nice place to grow up, I think. I really enjoyed my time living there and it's nice to go back home. Nice. Them. And first memories of West Ham? From ever since I can remember, it's just been everything is West Ham. Yeah. It's just, it has just been my whole life really. Um, I guess as a fan more than a player, yeah. my earliest memories are probably just watching them on the telly, then getting to go to games and, and just kind of following them from there. You've already answered my next question. First memories West Ham watching them on the telly, but do you remember going to your first game? I, I went to two games, my first two games, yeah. I can't remember what order they were in. We drew 0-0 yeah. um, and we lost 5-1 to Leeds and that game I think we had three sent off. I think it was low mass. Ian Wright and Shaki Hislop yeah. all got sent off and I thought, this team is for me. <laughs> like, we lost 5-1, but just like, the passion of the fans, everything, I was just like, I was hooked from that moment. I was just like, football's amazing. And, and yeah, that was, that was just like, I know West Ham's for me. And with that, was there a player that you saw and you was like, I want to meet them. I need to know what they're about. I want to get to know this player beyond being a footballer. Yeah, I think when I was younger, it was, it was more like Joe Cole. Yeah. Uh, Paolo Di Canio, I quite like the flairy type players, yes. uh, Trevor Sinclair as well. And then I remember the first time I, I met Mark Noble, yeah. I was so shy and he <laughs> called me over and I was like, no. no. Like, I, honestly, I was, I was like, no, but now he, like, I see him a lot and he pulls my hair in the canteen and stuff like that and it's just like, he's just a normal bloke. Yeah. But for me, when I was growing up, I was like, oh my God, that's Mark Noble, you know? So even as an adult, when I came here and I'm like in my late 20s and I'm, too nervous to speak to yeah. you. Um, I think I've kind of got over that with the players. I try and play it yeah. cool, whether I do or not, I don't know. Talking about seeing those footballers, seeing how flary they were, when was the time you was like, okay, let me give it a go now? Um, I mean, from as young as I can remember, I was yeah. kicking a ball about on the street. Yeah, I just always wanted a ball at my feet yeah. and just really enjoyed it. And like for me, it's been like the social side of it as well. Football just brings out so much in terms of friendships. Yeah that it's just so enjoyable to play and I can't really remember why I started playing, I just know that I did and I, I've, I've always loved every sport anyway but football for me just took Top a hold, tip. yeah. So Colchester, was that your first all girls set up? Uh, no, actually um, from the boys team that I was yeah. at, um, one of the girls that I went to school with, she was also in the boys team and her uncle set up uh, a girls team, yeah. so under the same name which yeah. is Valley Green. Um, so, yeah, we, that was my first girls team and then when I got to Colchester, um, I had to, we, we played against them and I had to have a trial. You got the um, call up. I got invited to a trial, so I went along to the trial um, and I got in and I was, I was so nervous waiting for the letter yeah. and hoping that I'd got in um, and then I didn't know whether I wanted to go or not because I really enjoyed playing for yeah. that girls team and I was like, oh, but we get to play against Arsenal, yeah. Chelsea, some of the big teams, you know. Um, so yeah, for me it was like, okay, I'll make the decision. So who knows where I would have ended up. Um, but yeah, so I, I did have a girls team first, um, but that was what allowed me to then get into the to Colchester setup. I love that. So we've done some reminiscing. We're going to take a seat on the bench and we're going to talk about some of your West Ham memories. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good. He's got here. So, skipping forward a bit, how did the opportunity for West Ham come up? Well, my contract had ended at Liverpool yeah. and it was kind of time to try something different, a different team. So I was kind of like, oh, I don't know, I needed to do, obviously, West Ham is my team and everything, but I needed to do what was best for me, like, career-wise yeah, move definitely. and everything. Pre-season had actually started, and then a couple of weeks into pre-season, um, the general manager at West Ham messaged me and was like, oh, like, do you want to come along to West Ham training? So I was like, yeah, okay. Because I, I was yeah. literally like, still trying to work out what I wanted to do, yeah. but nothing had been like a concrete offer. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so then I just came in and then 
straight away. Like I already knew Jilly, yeah. um, I already knew Becky Spencer, I already knew Raph. And then everyone else there, like as soon as I went there, I was like, okay, like everyone's cool. And then, yeah, just from there, just got off the contract and, and signed. And you've been here for five years now. Yeah. A lot's happened in that five years. Yeah. What are some of your personal highlights? I mean, obviously getting to the FA Cup final in the Naturally. first year, we've, yeah. we've spoken about that before. Um, the semi-final was like unreal and such an emotional day. But yeah, yeah to get to Wembley um, and play FA Cup final for West Ham was just unreal. I think like, just meeting so many good people as yeah. well. Like every player that I've played with here and, and so many people, I mean, there's been a lot of players. I have been here five years, yeah. but, but just meeting so many good people and, and people from different walks of life and like finding how we can all get along and try and make things work. Like for me, that's that's one of the biggest things. And I know I said it earlier, but like socially football for me is yeah. like such a big thing. Is there any standout memories, even if it's not on the football pitch, like of those people that you've named, like where you've just thought, you look back and you think, that was just class. Like, I wish I could relive that moment. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's probably loads. Yeah, there's... I mean, every Christmas, <laughs> every Christmas night out and end of season, I love it. Like, yeah. it's just everyone together, coaching staff included, yeah. you know, like, it's a bond that you probably don't get in a lot of other areas of work. Yeah. Um, and probably something I won't experience again um, after football. West Ham do a lot in the community and you have yourself over the years. What's been some of your highlights of, of working in West Ham in the community? It has to be working with the Any Old Irons. Um, yeah. I've done a lot with them and it's probably been one of my favourite things of, of being at West Ham. Yeah. Um, just because you get to meet so many good people that are West Ham fans yeah. and you know that's probably me in Literally, well, I was going to say across the board, time, everything yeah. in common. <laughs> exactly. Um, I've really enjoyed spending a lot of time with them and doing things with them, and even like Zoom calls and things um, when it was the pandemic. Yeah. Like, I don't know, just a small part of your time makes yeah. makes a big deal for them. Your time at West Ham as a player is is coming to an end against Spurs. Yeah. It's a big game, isn't it? Like, what a way to go out as a West Ham player. How, how are you feeling about that? Yeah, it's kind of like the maybe the best way to go out um, if we win. I do not want to lose that game. <laughs> I do not want to lose that game. Um, yeah, there's like a rivalry there, obviously. It's, it's not one of my favourite teams. So um, to go out beating them would, would just be like the perfect end to my, to my career here. And how do you look back on your time at the club? That's a tough question. <sighs> Enjoyable, yeah. hard, patient at times and proud probably. You will forever be in the history books of your childhood club. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, amazing. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's been a privilege to, to play for the club that I love. I've given everything I've got and, and that's what I've tried to do every every time I've stepped foot on the pitch, whether that's training, yeah. matches. Um, I think I can honestly say I haven't not giving 100% yeah. of myself. It's been so good talking to you and thank you so much for giving me your time and I've honestly really enjoyed it and I can't wait to see what's next. Thank you very much. We've smashed that. No tears as well, got a shaky voice, but no <laughs> tears. <laughs>